Hey everyone, what is up? So this is my first video back from maternity leave. <laughs> um, I am seven days, six days postpartum, um, almost a week. <laughs> I am been a mom for a week, it's very exciting. And um, obviously you guys know this is my job. I've been doing YouTube for the past literal 16 years. So I'm super lucky. I've always been super lucky to have this job and now more than ever, I am so thankful to have this job and um, I love what I do and I'm so happy that I get to be a stay at home, work from home mom. Um, <laughs> ah, I'm gonna already cry, but <sighs> feels like weird, like oddly emotional to be doing this because it's like, it's just, it's just, it's just a whole new life for me and chapter and um, it's like kind of like it's it's scary in the sense that like I'm like I don't know what this becomes you know what I mean like I don't know my life has always been online and YouTube and it's like I don't you know obviously I just I just want to be a mom like that's my thing you know and that's all I've ever wanted so it's like this whole new chapter and like it feels like a whole new me so I guess it's in that sense it's scary to be like presenting myself to you guys does that make sense like I just feel like when I got pregnant, I felt like a completely different person. I felt like I changed so much. And then like the minute I had my daughter, I, I, I don't know how to explain it. Like I just feel like a totally different person. So it's like kind of scary to be on camera because I just feel so different. Um, obviously for the better, but it's, uh, it's, it's like this crazy, I don't know. It's just like this crazy new world that I'm like navigating and, um, like I, pretty much been off of like social media. I read the comments on um, like the birth vlog and stuff like they were so nice. Like, you know, I don't really read the Twitter, or the TikTok right now because I just want to like bask in everything. And I just, you know, I look at the comments, I see if they're like nice and then if they're nice, I keep reading them and they've all been so, 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 so nice. Like so nice and lovely. And um, I, I just, I don't know, it just, it feels really good. So, um, like, I've been off of social media in the sense, like, I don't really check anymore. Like, I used to be concerned with, like, what people said about me or what people say. Like, if I see a TikTok about myself, I just scroll through. I just pass it, you know? Because um, sometimes you don't want to know for better or worse. Because I was, I was just basking in, you know, giving birth and stuff like that. I was reading those comments and it felt so good. It just felt so good. It just, I don't know, just all the support from everybody out there. Um... Anyways, okay, that's not the point of this video, but I'm I'm here filming first time as a mom, which is super, uh, like I said, I just feel like a totally different person, so I don't know, I don't know what's, what I'm, you know, what's to become of this channel, like Halloween's coming up, so I want to do like decorations, and um, you know, I do want to try and do some weight loss for no other reason than, to, uh, we obviously want to have more children, and um, I'm 34, so you know, sooner rather than later, so I'm just trying, I'm thinking maybe doing cooking videos, but like, healthy cooking videos, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, I'm not really sure where this channel's gonna go or be, but obviously with Halloween and, and then obviously just trying to be healthier to um, lose some weight to get pregnant again, um, I, um, I don't know, I don't know where this channel's going, but thank you guys for being here again and thank you to new subscribers, old subscribers, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot of unknown. Like I'm actually starting like a new podcast tonight. I'm gonna try it out. It's on my old Trish Talks channel. I'm gonna film an ASMR video right after this because I love my ASMR channel. And then I, we have a vlog channel that became like a family channel. And like, I don't know, I just, I, I don't know what we're doing over there either, but we're just posting our life right now. And it's been really, really great. And I've just been um, really happy. So I've been posting a lot of baby content and I'm so proud of her. It's the best thing that's ever happened in my entire life. So you best believe I'm gonna shout it from the mountains. Um, yeah, so, okay, all of that, <laughs> all of that to say, hey guys, what's up? Um, okay, so let's talk about this video. I wanted to, I'm so excited and so honored to get to do one of these, this the labor and delivery story time. Um, I loved watching Colleen's and I've watched so many other, just people I don't, I've never even heard of, I just watched their birth vlogs. Actually, Nicole Guerrero, she did a labor and delivery story time, which was really, she had a lot of, interesting stuff to say and I really enjoyed that so I've just been you know watching people's it's cool and like Carly Bible like a lot of like OG like beauty makeup gurus not that I was one but it's cool to see them like have babies I don't know it's just I don't know I feel like when you have a baby it's fun to watch other people have babies and so I don't know <laughs> maybe maybe not, I don't know 
But I was, I'm very honored, like I said, to get to do this. I never thought that I would, honestly, truth, like, oh my God, I can't cry because I have to go film an ASMR after this. Oh my gosh, okay. Um, <laughs> I put on makeup today and everything, and I gotta get my roots done. Once my C-section heals up, I'm getting these roots done. This is like the darkest, and there's absolutely gray in my hair. Absolutely there is. Um, yeah, I didn't, I, I did not think this would be in the cards for me. My husband and I have tried for basically a year and a half um like we've been trying for kids since tw like october 2020 so i don't know do the math there but um like and you know what i mean by trying we've been trying right not doing like any sort of treatments just trying to have kids and the not you know the the natural way the i don't know i don't know how to explain it but you know what i mean without the help without ivf I mean, we're just trying to have kids right um and i like it it always was a problem for me and um i you know i really started thinking it wasn't a problem because obviously i was like it just has always been a problem for me and then obviously with the both of us i just thought wow like you know this might not be in the cards for me um for us and um yeah so anyways i have a whole thing we did a HSG test right after we got married, um, which I had gotten those done before. It's kind of to see your tubes, to check your tubes if they're clear or not. And it's not used as a fertility treatment, but the test, like like 90% of people get pregnant after they do the test because it clears out your tubes for three months. Like it has this open archway. And I've actually done it before in the past um, and it didn't work So for me. So I, I wasn't expecting much, but literally my next the next time i was supposed to have a menstrual cycle it didn't come and i found out i was pregnant that was january of this year it was january 12th of 2022 so i thought i was pregnant this year had a baby this year it went by super fast pregnancy was amazing all of that this is so long it's already seven minutes okay let me let me get to it okay so i need to say i'm very grateful to be making this video i'm grateful to have gone through the birth ex pregnancy experience and the birth experience best experience of my life well, we'll get into that. So pregnancy was really, really easy for me. If you guys have followed, like pregnancy was just, just so much fun. It was just relaxing and, and just getting to eat good food. And my body was like really great at telling me like when I was full, if you guys don't know, I have a binge eating disorder and it was, it was really bad, um, before my pregnancy, it, like I, I, would, I could just binge and just binge and just make myself like sick from food but I physically couldn't do that while pregnant there was something like my I was carrying high or something where I was just like feeling full like it felt like a gastric sleeve where you just felt full so um like I could eat what I wanted but I would feel full so it wasn't like I was overeating and I actually like gained a pretty healthy weight during my pregnancy I did start off overweight at 226 I ended my pregnancy at 250 um I have not weighed myself since I'm not really planning on it right now um and right now i haven't started my like i'm trying to i probably will do like a low carb sort of diet low carb low sugar diet um to kind of get the weight off um but i haven't really started that fully only because i don't really have an appetite so i'm kind of just trying to eat what i what i can eat which isn't much like i've been eating like chicken and like i had like a jamba juice and like i had a muffin or something you know what i mean like it's just kind of weird i haven't really had an appetite since giving birth but I digress um so let's start let's start with the labor and delivery process so pregnancy was great I meditated every day I really heard so many stories about people being like you know birth was actually really great once you get the epidural you feel nothing it comes out it's like you're numb it's perfect and I heard that from so many people and it really gave me like confidence and I wasn't so scared because some people will try and scare you right like birth is the most painful thing ever and while I can say my experience it was the most painful thing ever like i did not think i would survive like once it's all over and done like it does move quickly where you don't really feel that in the moment but once it's all over and done i want to do it again i wish i could do it again with my daughter but i'm like i just want to do it again because it was such a great experience okay so let's start with the day of september 14th 2022 which is like kind of unheard of that you like 
you you go into labor and deliver on the same day i guess if it's like early in the morning the chances of you delivering the same day are probably high but you know a lot of times you go in like it's an overnight or something but um is it i don't know i guess the ones i was watching they were going in overnight so like the baby was born the next day or they went in too early and they had to come back the next day um i don't know anyways so ours started september so i our our first due date was september 25th then it got moved to September 18th. Now, a lot of people were very confused about the due date situation. They were very like, oh my God, lying about the due date. Like the thing is, is the due date can change because there's no accurate thing. When we got our due date, it was like six weeks. There was like a little tiny heartbeat. They had to like, actually, they couldn't even do it over my belly. They had to like do it insertion style to see, you know, where I was at. But still, there's no way to pinpoint really like conception, when did we conceive, the due date, because it just changes. Even if you have the perfect due date, it could be two weeks before, two weeks after, right? So ours was September 25th, got moved to September 18th, and we loved the 18th. We got engaged on the 18th. 18th in Judaism is about his life, it's chai, it's all of that. So I was like really excited to have the 18th as our due date. Um, so much so that if it wasn't, I was gonna just get induced on the 18th if she didn't come on the 18th. Um, or I think it was induced on the 17th to give birth on the 18th because I just loved that number. I was like, that's going to be a great number and perfect. Um, 18th it is, you know, but um, we obviously didn't make it there. So it was September 14th and I, you know what, the day before I went into labor, I was very active. I was like cleaning out my entire closet. I was like on the floor scooping up clothes. Like I was being really active. I don't know why, because I was really tired. My last week and a half of pregnancy, I was feeling pregnant. I was like, you know what, this is very uncomfortable. It's hard for me to sleep. You know what I mean? You're just, I was just ready to have the baby, but nothing would have prepared me for September 14th that morning. So I woke up that morning at like 5 a.m., which is again, isn't weird because I, I went to the bathroom like three or four times every night, right? The last trimester. So I went at 5 a.m. and I, you know, peed or whatever. And then I stood up, you know, after I wiped all this stuff like that, I stood up and then like, a, like it felt like I, was, I had a gush of pee again, kind of, but obviously it wasn't pee and it felt very different than pee. It was like a gush of like water, it just kept, it was like a faucet, right? It just keeps dripping. You know, sometimes you can like control it or stop it. You, you really couldn't. It just, and it, I always heard like, what if my water breaks on the toilet? How will I know? And mine actually did. My water actually broke on the toilet. And I didn't know because also they say like 10% of, you know, women's water breaks. Like, not, like most people's water don't break actually. So I was like, okay. And then literally I had a little spotting after. So I'm, you know, me, I'm just Googling all this. You know, my husband's asleep, but I kind of wake him up and I think my water broke. I don't know. Um, there's like spotting. I, I lay back down, whatever. About a half hour of laying down, I start getting really intense period cramps. And when I had talked about this before, you know, they were saying that like, no, it's not really period cramps in your uterus. You'll feel it higher, like in the abdomen. So I was thinking like, okay, these are really intense period cramps. And they said, that's not contractions, right? Because I was feeling light period cramps that week before very light compared to this, but these felt like really intense period cramps in my uterus, not like in my abdomen, which I said they would be higher. And the other thing you always hear about contractions is that they're, um, that they're spread apart, right? And then they get stronger and closer together as you're about to give birth, or, yeah, give birth, go into delivery. So mine were so intense right away, like so intense where I was just like, again, it feels like you have to go poop is that that's pretty much how it feels so I was going back and forth like to the bathroom and I kind of was going so it's kind of like confusing because I was you know I had bowel movements so I was like okay maybe it's just this maybe they're just you know but they were so intense but again we just didn't think like it, it, it the cramps would come like every I would I would go to the bathroom I'd come back and lay down for literally a minute and the cramps would start again and I'd go back to the bathroom it was it was so bizarre so we're like okay this doesn't feel like you know you don't know what contract like it was so intense like I was you know so either way my husband's like we need to go to the hospital because even if these aren't contractions like you're obviously in a lot of pain and there's spotting we ended up getting a hold of my OBGYN, my doctor who's gonna deliver the baby and he's like go straight to the hospital so we're like okay we'll go to the hospital but this is after like an hour and a half of me like cramping going to the bathroom cramping going to the bathroom so i guess my contractions started right there at like 5 30 and they were so close together they were low in the uterus and they felt like the most intense period cramps that you have to like go poop all that like it was just and mine were literally minutes apart I don't know what else to say like I, maybe that sounds crazy maybe I'm the only one maybe other people have, have had that experience I'm not sure but it literally was like they were so close together so we like go to the hospital I didn't even I didn't do my hair 
Um, I don't even think, I guess I, no, you know what? I brushed my teeth and I brushed my hair, but I couldn't like flat iron it. I wanted to shave. I wanted to, you know, tweeze my eyebrows. I wanted to do all of that. None of that happened. I was in so much pain. I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm just saying like they were, it was painful. Again, having said that, like I will go through, I would go through this all gladly again. My second one, I think we'd probably schedule a C-section. I don't really know what that entails. Like, I don't know if that like they induce you, if there's contractions involved. Either way, if there is, I'm down for it. You know what I mean? I'll do it all over again because it's worth it. And you forget, you truly forget the pain. But like I said, it was so painful. Like I just remember being like, I don't think I'm going to survive this. Like truly, I did not think I was going to survive this. So we went to the hospital and we had like, right away they got me a wheelchair. They're like, are you in active labor? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but I was, my eyes were closed and I was just, I was wincing the whole time. I couldn't see anyone. I couldn't see the hospital. I just was in, so I was, ah, like I was, I was that person that was making noise and stuff like that. So we go upstairs they're like checking me in now if you guys watched my birth vlog um moses filmed like a little bit like i wanted him to film all of it obviously but i think for him it was probably we'll have to do like a video together or something like that but i'm sure for like he had told me he felt so helpless he was so scared like he didn't know what to do like there was nothing he could do so obviously he wasn't like i'm gonna start filming but i really wanted him to film so he filmed like little clips when i started getting control of myself i guess you could say because when we checked in I don't know, I was like in a wheelchair in, in the hallway. I like was so discombobulated, I could not answer questions. Then we got to our room, they put me in a room and the nurses were asking me a ton of questions and it just, it felt like forever. I was screaming, I was cursing and I kept apologizing after I cursed like, ah, you know, and then I'd be like, sorry, sorry, sorry. You know, I just was like, it was so crazy. Like the pain was just, it was, and I, and then, like I said, I was able to control it. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But like that first hour, I think it was at least an hour of like I was answering questions. And finally, towards the end, they're like, "Do you want the, like you're gonna get an epidural?" And I was like, "Yes, please." Now, like we had to fill out this paperwork. And then they're like, "Well, the anesthesiologist is actually in surgery for like 45 minutes, so he's not gonna be able to come up here for like an hour." And I was like, oh. "Then they were able to give me some sort of other pain medication via um, IV." This whole thing was kind of a blur. I was holding on to dear life for the bed. I don't even think like that part was shown. I think the part that Moses filmed like a little bit of is when I started getting myself a little bit together. And the only way I was able to do that is I was actually sitting up. Like laying down made my contractions worse and to the side. So I sat up and I just was like holding. And when they would come, I would just have to like really breathe out. The nurses were saying like, you know, blot a birthday candle or something like that. But for me, I was like, <sighs> and like really just breathing. And it helped you know, somewhat, but yeah, sitting up and just like, yeah, basically the whole like birth, like labor part, I was just wanting to be silent and not talk to anyone. Obviously they had asked me questions, but I just, you know, and my husband is so, you guys obviously saw it there, but just in general, he's just so calm. And so, um, he has like this peacefulness about him, which has helped me so much in my whole life, but specifically this moment. So like we were communicating, but just having his presence there and then my breathing techniques and stuff, it just, it did help. Still was really painful, but I wasn't like excruciating pain. So after a while, they do, you do kind of get used to them, I suppose. And then once the epidural came, um, which was like an hour later, you know, a lot of people are like the epidural could hurt, the needle, all that stuff like that. I couldn't feel anything. I had no idea what was going on. I was in so much pain. I was, I didn't even know. He, I guess Moses was saying they brought him around. So he wasn't looking at like the needle going in my back. He's like, there was like a tube and he was like, pushing pressure and twisting and all that stuff like that. And all I remember the anesthesiologist saying, was like, you have a really strong back. And I was like, I don't know if that's good or bad in this situation, but I was in so much pain. I literally felt nothing. So I don't know if the epidural is supposed to hurt or not. People say it does. I like was in so, so, so much pain that like that epidural, like I couldn't even feel. But once it was in, it kind of made me a little loopy. I don't know if that's like for everyone. I kind of felt very like, hey, this is good. I don't know. It's again, that was my experience. But um, it did make me numb and the, the, um, what are they called? What are those called? I just was talking about them so much now. I can say pregnancy brain, but it's not pregnancy anymore. Not, not the inductions. Oh my God. So the contractions, they virtually stop basically. And, um, like it was, it was great. It was the best relief ever. So I 10 out of 10 recommended epidural. 
I mean, if you want to have a natural birth, like more power to you. I mean, I know a lot of our moms all did it back in like the 80s. Well, I have 80s. You guys are probably like 90s or 2000s. But um, I would really recommend it. And I thought I had a pretty strong pain tolerance, but whoo. So I get the epidural and literally like an hour later, I went from four centimeters when I went into the hospital as four centimeters dilated when I got checked in to 10 centimeters with literally like an hour and a half. It was so fast. I remember my husband was like down in the cafeteria or something for literally like a minute, like a minute. And I was like, hey, I think I'm like 10 centimeters. I don't know if that means I have to start pushing. So I had to, I did start pushing. My doctor comes in and he's like, yeah, just start pushing. But he, like the nurses kind of helped me start the pushing. They were like practicing with me, but like, I guess I was actually pushing. I ended up pushing for three hours. Now, when you have the epidural, my epidural started wearing off after three hours, let me tell you. But at the beginning, you feel the contractions because it feels like a pressure, right? The epidural takes away the contractions, but you still feel pressure. So it felt, again, like you're pushing from your butt, like you're pushing, like, again, people say, like you have to poop. And um, the pushing was intense. And I don't know if it's because, you know, I, I was overweight, I am overweight or I just didn't like exercise much in my last trimesters of pregnancy. I'm not sure what it was or just being out of shape. But like pushing is intense. You you obviously like, you take a deep breath in and then you hold it and then you like push, push, push for 10 seconds. So it's like straining your heart. It's straining a lot of things. And again, if you're not in great shape or you don't eat the best, and again, I'm, I'm that person that I'm very guilty of that. I think next pregnancy, I would be a little more mindful of exercising more i mean look i honestly couldn't my feet hurt everything hurt like it just wasn't it didn't feel right for me but maybe next pregnancy i would try and eat like a little healthier and like lighter especially towards the end because towards the end i was eating like tons of cheese and i was just thinking like oh my god all this cheese and my heart can't take this because it's a lot it's really really intense the fact that i even pushed for three hours is like crazy to me but my epidural was wearing off and now they do give you like a recharge in the epidural but my nurses were trying to tell me like no don't do the recharge because we want you to feel a little something you know when the baby comes so you definitely keep pushing but i was like no i need this so i ended up taking another epidural and then we ended up taking like a break in between they gave me like a peanut so i could roll to the side because basically what had happened was is my baby wasn't in the right position her head was down but her face was like they needed her to like flip a little. I don't know how to describe it, but basically she couldn't come out the way she was. So we were like trying to flip her by like doing like the, pe like I was doing this little peanut position. Um, but yeah, she was not moving down. She was always really high up. I never really dropped. Um, she was always really high up. So um, basically the heart beat started falling. Her heartbeat started falling. And at the beginning they weren't like too concerned with it, but it, got really low I think like 50 or something I don't know if that's the exact number but something like that and they're like my doctor comes in and he's like we're gonna have to do a c-section I, like, oh, I really didn't want to do a c-section because I really wanted to have that moment I watched so many birth vlogs I wanted to have a moment where she comes out and lay on my chest and I just wanted to see her and all of that because I couldn't obviously with a c-section watch her come out or anything like that and I really didn't want a c-section because it is this really major procedure I just I didn't I wasn't I did not I did not want a c-section some people do opt for it some people schedule it some people love it I just didn't want it but you know obviously the baby's health was the most important thing and if her heartbeat was dropping I'm like please just get her out and healthy like that's all I wanted so it wasn't even a question he's like we need to do a c-section I'm like yes absolutely let's do it so from um, the time they took me in, and you can see it on the birth vlog, Moses just shows it's like 5.15 in the back to the time she is delivered. It was about 15 minutes total. They were so, I actually probably went in about 5.05. Moses probably went in about 5.15. So 5.05 to 5.31 when she was delivered. So 25 minutes because they kind of rolled me over. I don't know how they moved my body. <laughs> like they moved my body from one, I guess, like stretcher to another do that like I'm trying to think like how they like roll me over I'm not sure I have no idea um the anesthesiologist will give you a little something stronger obviously nothing they can't put you out because you're like I don't know why I guess because you're having a baby but they can't or it might affect the baby or the placenta so they don't give you like the strong stuff that they give you for like liposuction or breast implants which is great when they put you out but they give you something stronger obviously I don't know what it was but I didn't feel anything during the surgery it was really great the anesthesiologist I had superb everyone was superb my doctor everybody was superb um but like the anesthesiologist was he was really great and um really good at like distracting 
they just give it through your vein through your IV um and then yeah and then I didn't feel anything so Moses comes in and you know they're working down there I'm I'm still distracted because I'm talking to the anesthesiologist and Moses is now in there he's like holding my hand there's a curtain so you're not seeing anything again I don't feel anything um you hear stuff obviously you're awake you hear stuff I almost felt like a little bit of like I almost felt like flesh burning it was a little crazy smelling but you know at this point I'm sedated I'm relieved that I'm not pushing and I just want her to be healthy so I'm in my own head like just you know happy healthy baby happy healthy baby and literally like 15 minutes later we start we hear these like cries which wasn't like a screaming cry like a baby and I was like wait what is that and they're like it doesn't sound like and it, it sounds like a baby to me and then they're like congratulations you have a healthy baby girl I couldn't see her I start crying I start crying again um Moses was able to get up and see and then go over and cut the umbilical cord and stuff like that I'm I'm just happy that I hear her. I'm happy that people are congratulating us. Um, all of that. I was just, I, I just, that moment was just beautiful. And I was so sad that I couldn't see her. And, you know, I heard them doing stuff over there, like to the side. You know, my husband's right there with her. So he's he was there from her coming out. He literally had video and pictures of the. I don't think you can show that on YouTube. I don't know if I want to show that on YouTube, but um, just seeing that first moments he was able to capture. And then he went over and then I heard and then they brought her over to me within a few minutes of all of that. And I got to be face to face with her. They're like, do you want to hold her? And I was like, how do I do this? Because like my head's just sticking out of this curtain. And I got to hold her and it was just it, it was just surreal of all the surreal moments I've talked about in life where it doesn't seem like real. It seems like a dream. Like this was the most dreamlike state I've ever been in. Like it didn't seem real, but at the same time, it felt like, I don't know. Like you just, I just looked at her and I was like, that's my baby. That's her. That's, that's, that's who I've been waiting for. Oh my gosh. Okay. My like whole life. And she, she had, you know, Moza even before she, a lot more was squished around her head and stuff. They were like really massaging her head to kind of get it out. Cause I don't know if she was like stuck high up in there or she's like, I guess she was kind of smushed, um, against, I mean, my placenta, the whole, um, pregnancy, but this part, last part, she was kind of smushed in there. So like her face was kind of all like smushed up and stuff like that. So, um, she was really good and really calm though. Like, you know, she started crying. I just started talking to her and she kind of just, you know, calmed down and just you know was quiet it was very it was very like peaceful it was very dreamlike and it felt very just like I don't know how to describe it like like she's always been there I guess like she's this was like this missing piece and um I, it's, it's so hard to explain I don't know how to describe it it just it felt very I don't know. For me, I didn't know how I was going to feel. Am I going to feel overwhelmed? Am I going to be like, oh my God, I have a baby. Is it like shocking? But it, it it felt very natural. Like it felt like this person was missing from my life and she was here. And I was like, this makes sense that you're here. And it was just the most, I don't know how to describe beautiful thing that's ever happened in my life. So after that, you know, they had to take her and I, they did some stuff. And again, Moses went with her um, in the nursery. They were doing I guess maybe some tests or something. Um, they went me back to my room. I'm still kind of out of it. My husband comes back with her. We get some really nice family time. And again, I'm so thankful, even if you don't post it on YouTube, like I would highly suggest filming what you can or having your partner or spouse or support person film what you can because I don't remember so much of it, but like looking back, I like remembered it, you know, like triggered those memories because in the moment you're like sedated, a lot's happening. The whole experience from start to finish did go very quickly. Uh, like contractions were very long and pushing was very long, but it did seem to go very fast, I guess. It just didn't seem like much waiting around. It was like boom, boom, boom. I don't know if that's the illusion or if mine was fast. I'm not sure. But we, water broke at 5 a.m. Baby was born at 5.31 p.m. So total 12 hours. Again, I don't really know if that's long or short. I guess that's maybe normal. Um, but it was um, it, it was definitely worth just have video of all that, those first moments, because 
I remember it, but it's just like taking it all in. And she's changed so much in six, seven days. Like she had, her face has changed, her features, the way she is, her everything has changed so much. So seeing those initial moments together, it was the best thing that's ever happened in my life. And it's the best feeling. I love rewatching it. I love being in those moments because things do go so quickly. You are in so much pain. You're kind of just going with it because that's what you have to do, right? The body is such a beautiful thing. I learned during pregnancy, like my baby was this healthy, beautiful, happy baby girl and my body just made her. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything special or anything. I just, the body just made this amazing human and I had so much respect for my body during pregnancy and then now or during birth i was like wow my body is amazing so even now when i'm like trying to eat healthier i'm like i gotta like honor my body and respect my body because my body created this like life and it's this crazy crazy thing and i'm like i don't know i never respected my body i've always hated my body i always like trashed my body but now i'm like no my body is so beautiful and so strong and I'm not saying you have to be like healthy and skinny to have this, but I'm saying like, you know, I got to honor it like so much better than I had in the past. And I think during pregnancy, my body just naturally did that. I was like rejecting fast food. I was rejecting like, you know, food that wasn't good for me, like junk food and stuff. Um, and it was just, it's just like this really beautiful experience. So, so was pregnancy. It was this or birth, I should say. And I just really love my body and like really respect it so much. Um... So yeah, it was it was a crazy experience. Like your body just knows, I guess was where I was going with that. Your body just kind of knows what to do. Labor, delivery, all that. It kind of just knows and you kind of just go with it. Um, so while I would say my birth experience, my labor and delivery was very positive, it was very painful and very scary. And Moses would tell you that too. Um, you know, he was like the whole time I just kept thinking like, I want you to get through this. I need, you know, let's get through this. Let's get through this. Cause he's ultimately your husband or partner, whoever's with you, you know, they're very helpless in this. This is a very isolated experience, right? While you have everyone's support and help and all the nurses and doctors, it's you that has to do this work, right? Your body has to like come through. So I think he was very scared for me, our baby, you know, I, you know, I was just, focused on happy healthy baby even my meditation is like happy healthy baby thank you so much like every day I would give thanks for my healthy baby girl um before it even happened you know and I am so so thankful I talk about gratitude all the time but this is the thing that every single morning I wake up and I'm so so thankful that not only did I get to experience it and create this life but this life is beautiful and healthy and happy and I just thank the universe God every single day for it it's the most it was the most amazing thing 10 out of 10 recommend <laughs> um i'm trying to think what else but yeah i mean i kind of logged like the post um postnatal care i guess you could say like we were in the hospital for a couple days usually they recommend four days for a c-section we stayed two nights we ended up leaving um because i had it pretty much under control our baby was good she got all her tests done she was you know um healthy we had our pediatrician follow up like a couple um days after the birth so we came home just to be in the comfort of our own house and um it was it was crazy those first 24 hours home you're just like oh my gosh you know you have the baby and there's just all these adjustments and everything to learn and it's all this learning curve and it's it's very fun it is very exhausting c-section after c-section after leaving the hospital and getting like my iv out and all the medicines out i was i definitely was in more pain i stopped my pain medication a day after because i started feeling tightness in my chest i just didn't really i don't really love to take any sort of like addictive pain meds because I had a problem with those so I got I took I decided to not take my pain medication so I'm feeling so much this is six days postpartum and I'm feeling still so um like it's still very painful it hurts to bend um if you do have a c-section just give yourself the grace I can't speak I don't know obviously with a, a vaginal birth I'm sure there's its own pain and complications attached to it but with the c-section like you really can't bend you can't really lift your baby so for me i'm very lucky of course to have my husband but i would highly suggest having a support person help you after if you have a c-section because it can be very difficult it can be very um you can feel very guilty for not being able to like pick up your child 
um, you know, after childbirth because it's just like it's so hard to bend over and pick up like I can lay with her but it's kind of hard for me like you know go back up with her so I really did need my husband for all that and of course the late night feedings and stuff like that it's just you're just moving slower and your body just needs to heal um so I would just prepare for that obviously the going to the bathroom after um labor labor and delivery again I didn't have a vaginal birth so I can't really speak to that but after a c-section you know it's i'm wearing depends right now i wear adult diapers it's basically like having for me again everyone's very different it's like having your period for an extended amount of time um so it's not too too bad for, again for me specifically i don't it could be for different people but it's really not as bad as i thought i was kind of scared again i think if you're doing a vaginal birth and there's stitches down there that's a whole different story so um in that regard, I guess C-section is maybe maybe an easy recovery. It's still very tough and it's very <sighs> sad that you can't care for your baby properly because you can't bend over and you can't move quickly and you can't um, like hold, like you know hold up it you know yourself that well. Um, but yeah, I think for the second one, I think what they were talking about is possibly doing a scheduled C-section again. Um, not again because it was, wasn't scheduled, but to have a scheduled C-section because pushing vaginally after a C-section, I'm not sure. I know someone just recently did this. This influencer I follow, I think I think it might have been Tammy Hembrow, I think so I see her name. I think she had maybe two C-sections. I could be totally wrong, so please correct me if I am wrong, but she might have two sections and then did her second one, veg, or third one vaginally, I think. Um, I remember her like posting about it. So I guess it's totally possible, but I think for me, the trauma of pushing and just her not moving and just all that, I think it would be easier, I think, to have a C-section again um, because it was very quick. Um, obviously, there's, there's its own risks involved with it, but I don't know. The pushing just like was not working for for us and I was super dilated she was always in the down position I thought it was gonna be like just so easy um or just you know a relatively easy push and they all said that too they're like it's gonna be an easy push you're moving very quickly throughout these this process like you know you're just it's gonna be an easy push but it just it just wasn't so I think we'd probably do another c-section if for baby number two god willing if we're blessed um but yeah it's definitely labor and delivery is definitely painful it's definitely challenging being a new mom is very challenging and the first night i was very overwhelmed home without nurses and all this stuff like that but i have like obviously the most amazing husband in the whole world so i'm very thankful for that again gratitude 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 i always say how much like just if you if you didn't think you could love your partner spouse whoever more you know than you already do how when you have a baby with them and see them become a father a mother a, a, you know any sort of parental it's the most like everything about them like i don't know for me i just look at him as like i always have i've always looked at moses as, like my savior right like i just looked at him as like my savior this like my soulmate my shining light but like i look at him now as like <sighs> superhuman like otherworldly like miraculous like truly I don't know I just look at him as like this like a true king like a true just I don't know I don't know like just he's I can't even believe like I don't know where we started to where we are now I look at him and I'm just like this is the best person I could have ever had a child with I could have ever like loved and like I'm so thankful that like he loves us loves me and he's just the best with our daughter like the the love he has for her like it just instant he had instant I don't know he changed all the diapers at the hospital he, could, he stayed up all night with her while I was recovering from the c-section like and not only that, and then just and also with me, just taking care of me. And he's just like this perfect person, this perfect dad, like truly. I don't say that lightly. Like he's he's perfect. Like he just became this dad 
perfect dad right away. I don't know. I don't know how to say. It. I always like I ask him to. I'm like, how did you just fall into this so naturally? Because if I'm being honest, like changing my first diaper wasn't natural for me. It wasn't like something that I'm like I need to go do this. Like I was like, okay, this is gonna be very difficult. And like, oh my gosh, how are we gonna do this right? But he just slid into it very naturally. And again, it takes. It took me. You know, it's still taking me time to adjust. You know. But obviously, all of that changes. Like, you know, I used to have a thing with like farting and pooping and stuff like that. And obviously, when you're a parent, all that changes. If anything, it's kind of endearing when it's from your own child. But, you know, newborns, they they go to the bathroom pretty much 10 to 12 times a day. And they, you know, digest well. And it's, you just, you do just get over it as a parent, you know. But some, obviously transition smoother than others for me i had to like take a minute i was like okay but now it's like nothing but for him it was just like boom right into it boom right into it so i think having said that you know give yourself grace to adjust i am still giving myself grace to adjust because um as much as i love being a new mom it is an adjustment like it is this whole new balance even today i'm like i just want to snuggle her obviously she's down for her um she's sleeping she's newborn sleep so much too but it's it's I know she's going to change so much with her sleep patterns and everything. So then my work is going to change like the way I'm filming and stuff. So, um, it's, it's all like an adjustment. So I'll change. It's all like, okay, let's see what we we're doing, you know? And again, we're very lucky because we're both work from home, stay from home, um, stay at home parents. So it's very easy for us to, um, alternate and watch the baby and you know newborn sleep so much like I said so it's very easy to just like put her down and um, monitor her but the hardest part is putting her down when like there's baby cuddles like we really did take the first um like these past five days have just been cuddle sessions I'm like I'll never get anything done but even this morning too I was like I mean because I'm filming this now it's like four o'clock in the afternoon which is very late for me I didn't even shower until noon because it's just holding her in bed and then when she wakes up you just want to be with her and you just want to cuddle. And I think the best advice I got from social media, I think I saw it on TikTok or something on the comment, was like, I said, how does anyone get anything done just cuddling the baby? And like, you don't. They're like, just enjoy this newborn phase. Because it does go by quickly. Even now, she's changed so much. And I just, you know, just I love all the snuggles and the cuddles. And she just loves being so close to us and our skin and all that stuff like that. And it's just been a really amazing, beautiful time in life. So... <sighs> anyways that is my labor and delivery story time i hope i gave it enough time i kind of maybe brushed through it i guess i don't know but it, that's kind of how it felt like the process was very you know and um i'm i'm thankful for that there was so much to be thankful for in this vlog i'm thankful for my healthy delivery i'm not thankful for my healthy baby girl my amazing husband i'm thankful for all of you guys for watching and the support it really 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 means so much because Again, like I'm, I, I feel like a completely different person, right? Like stuff I would have cared about in the past and stuff like that just doesn't bother me. But at the same time, like having so much love, like it feels like that alone feels like this turn of events where I, I don't know, it just feels really amazing and nice and just it means a lot. I think for any new mom, new parent, just support means a lot. And it just, I really, really appreciate it. And I, we have so much support in our real life, but just also because YouTube has been such a big part of my life, my job, my, my life, it, it just feels nice to have it on here as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know for me, like I said, when I became pregnant, but more so when I actually had her, I have respect for every single person who um, chose to be a parent, didn't choose to be a parent, stepped in, like in any sense of the word, if you're parenting over a child you know I have like so much respect so so much respect that I, there's no judgment I could ever have against anyone for you know how they raise a child so obviously if they're doing their best but um it's it's a it's a beautiful it's a hard job it's a beautiful job and I, I obviously respect people who don't have kids too like that's a that, that alone is a you know a big choice to make too when there's so much pressure in the world to have children so I'm not saying that but my respect for parents and um you know just doing their best like i really it's 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 a it's um 
it's just changing. <laughs> Everything about it just changes. I, I don't know. And you really can't know what it's like until you're a parent. And um, just the love. The love is... Uh, the unconditional love you feel it's crazy it is it's so again it's so hard to explain i keep saying dream like i keep saying all this stuff like that but the minute this like love this like i don't know it's just like this other you you just change i don't know my baby has changed my whole life my whole heart my whole everything the way i view everything i just um i do think babies change people um i don't know if that's i don't know <laughs> i don't know if that's like better or worse or whatever but they they totally they she's changed me she's changed my whole heart my whole everything and all you want to do is just protect that child and just do what's best for them and make them happy and everything i do i'm just like i just want to give her the best of everything which is why i like wanted to come and film and film my asmr i'm like i just want to keep working hard and give her this like amazing life and full of like love it's not even about things but just like love and just and also just yeah experiences and opportunity for her and all this stuff like that I just want to I just want to make it the best I don't know I'm kind of rambling at this point so ah, all right guys well that's gonna do it for me today like I said I don't know where this channel will go but that's kind of the fun of my life the past few years right it just, it all changes so quickly and you never know where it's going and I think that's kind of the beautiful thing about life but um yeah I know I love always checking in on YouTube and I love sharing my life and I love this new part I I do think it's I think it's just this beautiful thing and I don't know how to even convey that even more I just want to the beauty of life I don't know I don't know how to I don't know what to say but I just want to radiate that and just encourage it and just um I guess just starting life, <laughs> just starting. It just feels like I'm starting life again. I don't know. It's like I got this like whole reset on life and this whole new outlook and this whole new brain and this whole new body. You know, obviously I'm in the same brain and body, but like, do you know? What I, mean? I don't know. Maybe you don't know what I mean. I just feel like empowered and strong and um, I don't know. Also, I don't really sleep a lot at night because also when you're not waking up to feed and stuff like that, like I just wake up anyways just to check on her. I'm just like, is she good? Because when they do sleep for a long period of time, like, are you okay? Are you good? Um, so I just, it's been a lot. And we get up together too. Like if he's up, I'm like, okay, is she okay? You know, and, and all that stuff like that. So um, <laughs> just, we're just up all the time. Just be like, are you good? So anyways, all right, guys, that's my labor and delivery story time. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching and um, for all the sweet comments. Again, I'm really, really thankful for that. I reread them actually from the birth vlog. Those top comments are just so, so sweet. And it's just the most amazing thing to read because, you know, people obviously put my life online and people have their criticism and judgment, especially our relationship, me and my husband's, it's people have gotten it wrong so many times and you can scream at the top of your lungs you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong but people are gonna have their own opinion right so to have to read that like oh you can see the love like in a very vulnerable time where it wasn't there's nothing that could have been faked about that that was you know that vlog is very real it just feels nice because it's how we've always felt um and it just feels like this like again it's almost like this curtain has lifted and the people can see like the real behind it and again, I never really cared if people did or not because I knew what I feel, felt in real life, right? But it just feels extra. It's like sprinkle on a cupcake. It just feels a little extra special when something that you dedicated your life to, like YouTube or, you know, truly my whole adult life has been on YouTube. It just gives it that extra sort of like an extra hug. It just feels really good. So I really am thankful. I mean that so sincerely. Those comments have made me cry and they've comforted me and they've given me this whole like level of like a breath of fresh air and it means so much so thank you guys so much for all that and um yeah that's it all right i'm gonna go ahead and go i love you guys so much and i'll see you guys soon all right bye she's kind of waking up so she just ate so she's digesting <laughs> but this is a little baby little malibu we love these like little onesies for her to sleep in underneath the swaddle 
because you gotta keep them a little warmer when they sleep in their own bassinet at night. Look at this little thing. She's so peaceful. Ooh, put a little bow up for you. But yeah, she loves these little onesies. They're super, super soft. It's a double zipper, so it's easy to change those diapers. Oh, hi. <laughs> and her favorite thing to do is sleeping in our arms. <laughs> it's really hard at night to like have to put her in her own bassinet. And we've been trying during the day too to have her like nap in her crib so she gets used to it, but she really can sleep anywhere but this is the best little position oh my god she just fell asleep favorite thing ever <laughs> can y'all believe this this little baby i mean she's just so beautiful and so perfect i just love her yeah let's take your daughter to work day <laughs> do you need a diaper change Okay, I think she needs a diaper change. I cut, so we just have your, all the preciousness. Oh my god. And now when they wake up, oh my god, you just want to like, they just stare at you like, hello. Hello. They don't wake up much, but when they do, it's very exciting. You can sleep. This is where it comes, sleeping like a baby. But her face has changed so much. I know you guys can't see too much, but her face has changed so much. Which it might be just the most beautiful thing ever. All right. Was that our labor and delivery story time? She did so good. She was a true star of that. She, she survived so much. You were so strong and so brave. And we'll always have that special day. I think she could do it over and over again. Sometimes I get sad she's not under my belly anymore. But then I look at her and I'm like, she stays here forever. I'm gonna let her sleep. Actually, I'm gonna probably have to change the diaper. And then put you back to sleep. And we do take the ball off when she sleeps. <laughs> Just put it on for her because it matches so well. Okay. Say goodbye.